This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Dom Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hot Mike here on this Wednesday morning. WDAY Extra, KSFL TV, and Sioux Falls, Inforum.com. Buy some media zone coming up. Jeff Colt back. We buy it about a half hour. Get a first real dive into Colorado. We'll be there a week from tomorrow for the Bison and the Buffaloes. And our next guest is going to be there as well. All-time Bison great Noah Gindorf joining us here in studio because you got, uh, first off, it's great to see you. You, uh, well. you got a new gig. You've come over to the dark side, sure I hear. Sure did. Got to get in this Bison media uh, I guess cult, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so you're gonna be doing sidelines on the radio this yep, year. Yep, I'm. I'm pretty stoked to be part of the Biden 1660 crew. So should be should be a fun year. Congratulations. Uh, thank you. Now the first question: How did this all come about? Uh, yeah, just kind of random. I think Zach Peters, um, you know, was kind of doing the operations thing here. He's at Northwestern now, but uh, this this spring he kind of asked me, you know, if I had any interest in doing radio and. You know, I kind of mulled it over for a while, and I talked with my wife, and I was like, eh, you know. But I've been looking for a way to get back involved with the program, yeah. and this seemed like, I mean, just a home run in that sense of it. So get to be around the team a bunch more and, and just kind of dive more into this side of things. So I'm, I'm really excited. Did you ever think about this part, this road? Not at all. Yeah. No, never <laughs> thought I would be a radio guy. <laughs> You know, my friends have told me I got the face for radio. Yeah, welcome so. to the, welcome I mean, to the crew on that. Yeah, yeah, I, got, I got that one. I do this every day. So, Yep. yep. Um, what are you most excited about? Uh, probably just being back around the team, yeah. being involved in, um, you know, being back in the Fargo area. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked for that. And uh, just getting to be around the guys again, being around that team aspect, because I do miss football, definitely, um, just being around the whole operation. So. Getting to be back on the sidelines, be around the guys, and feel that energy. I I'm will tell really you this, and I'm not saying this because you're here. You, since the first time I interviewed you in high school, you've always been a great interview. So you will do great on radio, man. Yeah, you, I, I think you'll do really well. I'll be interested well. to see the other side of the coin here, how I do <laughs> interviewing other people. You know, <laughs> that it's a thing, man. You get, that always, I'll tell you this: just listen. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. Don't yep. have your next question prepared. Just listen to what they have to say, yep. and then go where yep. uh, you want to go. Take us back here because last time we talked was getting ready for professional football. Tell mm -hmm. us about the last 12, 18 months and how things went. Yeah, so I think we last talked before the draft. Yeah. Um, and, you know, going into that draft, uh, I had that second ankle procedure done and it's pretty invasive, kind of a nasty procedure I had done. And just because of that, about 20 out of the 32 NFL teams just essentially just blacklisted me. Wow. Yeah, just – because of how because it, of what the procedure was yes no kidding regardless of how it went just just because of what the procedure was um but that truly was my best option so i was fortunate to get an opportunity with seattle but um you know went there and still was dealing with a bunch of health issues i guess um because i mean your body really is just one system like i don't think that gets talked about enough mm. but you know the ankle still being you know not where i'd want it to be threw everything else off so just in my time in seattle i mean i i pulled my hamstring twice strained my calf twice wow. i had back problems um just because of you know things being a little bit off kilter uh everything got, just got thrown off and so that led to a, a whole load of other health issues so um was never really healthy there and never never really got a fair shot but you know i can't blame them i was an undrafted guy so yep. uh, you know best ability is your availability as they say so um you know, had a great time there and, and nothing but good things to say, but was let go and then uh, trained for a few more months. And then um, I think Pittsburgh had some injuries and was fortunate to get signed for their uh, practice squad uh, for a few weeks during the season. Had a great time out there and then, uh, you know, was let go in early November, I think it was, and um, had a few workouts and stuff like that after that, but nothing ever materialized. I mean, the health issue was just kind of a, a big hurdle to get over and never quite got back over it so uh, settled in enjoying the married life now and and just getting into being a normal dude did you feel like you were healthy er in when you got your chance in pittsburgh uh no not really i hmm. mean it it even now like still just kind of dealing with some issues and stuff like that yeah. just it'll probably be one of those things i just have to deal with for the rest of my wow. life and and that's kind of the price you pay for playing football and yeah it's unfortunate but you know I guess it's the plan that was laid out for me. Your so. perspective is impressive because I would be angry. Are you angry? 
not too much resentment. I mean, if I sit and dwell on it, you know, I obviously there's things I wish I had done differently or mm. things like that, but or went um, differently, right? Yes, yeah. obviously, yeah. yeah. But um, at the end of the day, you know, I'm still very fortunate, even just to make it as far as I did, and I have a lot of good things going for me now, so I can't complain too much. It's just the, uh, I think, what you lay out there shows exactly how difficult it is to make it. Mm-hmm. And then just you, everything you need breaks to go your way, and you have to stay healthy. There's a lot that goes in. It's not right. just performance. There's a ton of other things that go into that. Right. I mean, and even just looking at my story, if you take it way back, I was ready to leave after the 2021 yes. season and, you know, had good draft grade lined up, a, a good agent lined up, like, and it was going to be kind of a weaker tight end class. I mean, I had a ton of things going for me, and then, you know, it can all change like that yeah. and – I mean, here I am three years later still, you know, dealing with the the repercussions of that moment three years ago. Had you decided to go in 21, I guess, what was the feedback that you, because you were not going to be able to do any of the pre-draft process, correct? Yeah. I mean, in, it, in the winter of 22. Right. Yeah. I mean, I, I would have been totally out of commission for six months yeah. at least. And I mean, with a December, you know, I got injured in December and that right. puts you at June. So I missed yep. Everything, everything, yeah. everything, yeah. and and looking back now, like those six months were tough. You know, I wouldn't have been able to do anything. So it probably was the the right decision. Yep. I still think to come back for that extra year, but um, yeah, I just I don't know. It, there's a lot you can look back and dwell on, but it was it was the right choice at it's, the time. It's wild because you know, as cutting video today and watching your last game was the Arizona game, mm-hmm. and not knowing how much pain you were in then, mm-hmm. you would never tell. Yeah. You know, the the plays you made in that game, I remember I was talking with Jeff Kolbeck about this, you look great. Mm-hmm. And then to find out how seriously in pain that you were, I mean, just as you're watching this video now, how much were you gutting it out this day? Yeah, uh, I mean, it truly wasn't too bad. It was more, um, yeah, I was a little bit hindered, but I could honestly, you know, the adrenaline gets going. Yeah. You can get pumped up, and you can be out there feeling pretty good. Um just after the game, it's like, oh, my gosh, I'm yeah. hurting. And the yeah. doctor really did say, like, you know, this thing, if you keep going, it's kind of a ticking time bomb, and you're going to need a total ankle replacement wow. surgery at 24 years yeah. old, and that's nasty, nasty business. So uh had to think not only, if, you know, looking ahead to my pro career, but long term, um, just kind of it seemed like the right thing to do. I appreciate you sharing because it's it's got to be tough. It's tough because, you know, I've, I've known you since you were 19 or 18 years old that this was – you know, and especially the trajectory you were on, like you mentioned, it was seemed like a a home run was was going to happen here, but yeah. um, that's not how it played out. But I appreciate the fact you were able uh, to share. When you look back at, at some of this stuff, by the way, I, I have to do the math: forty four career receptions, twelve touchdowns. That's not bad. What, what if you I mean that's astronomical, man? Yeah, it's but crazy. Considering the way I started, it was five and five <laughs> there at the start of my career. So my percentage got a little worse as I got older. <laughs> This is number one right there. Touchdown yep. at Target. You got that forever. Yep. That's pretty good. At, yeah. At Target Field. You could you're gonna tell everybody, yeah, where's your first career touchdown? Yeah. Was at the Target where Field. the twins play baseball. Yep. That was pretty cool. <laughs> Even now, if I go to a twins game, just look out and left right? field, and I'm like, yep, that's where it happened. <laughs> tell me about the for people that don't know, the recruiting process out of Crosby. I, I wish I had more time because I I found I have basketball highlights of and that was the first time I saw you do anything was play basketball. Mm-hmm. I'm like, and I was told, no, he's dynamite in football. Like, really? Because he's darn good in in in, ba- in basketball. When did the the football hype train begin recruiting wise for you? Um, it was kind of after my junior season. Uh, I think, you know, I had an okay season that year. Um, just being from a small town, you know, you kind of stick out being the huge dude out there <laughs> playing quarterback. <laughs> um, but after that, you know, I started doing some of the junior days and things like that. So, um. That's when recruiting really started to pick up. And then going into that summer before my senior year, uh, I started picking up some offers. Um, and then I, I really wanted that NDSU offer, but they're like, oh, we got to see you in camp. And I was like, I don't know if that's true. I feel like I'm going to get an offer anyway. But, <laughs> I mean, Coach Roll's like, we want to see you in camp. Yep. I was, I mean, you're a 17-year-old kid. You're like, yes, Coach. <laughs> yes, Coach. I'll be there. So I, I ended up coming up to camp and earning an offer and then, you know, as things started to progress, like um, I just formed a really good relationship with the NDSU staff. So 
I think people may forget this. How real was Minnesota and PJ Fleck? Can you tell us about that? It was. It was very real. Um, you know, coming back, I think. Uh, you know, I did that whole circuit my my uh, summer before my senior yep. year and did all the camps and everything like that. And I kind of wanted to have the decision out of the way so I could just play football, enjoy my senior year and stuff like that. And um, you know, did the camps, didn't pick up the Minnesota offer and. Talking with like the Minnesota coaches, it seemed like everyone was on board except for the head coach at the time, um, hmm. and that you know leaves a little bit of a bitter nope. taste in no your doubt. mouth. And so that kind of just became like, okay, NDSU it is. And um, you know, I had the conversation with my parents if if they try to come back late in the picture, like what does that look like? And I was like, you know, it's kind of like you know, I'm done with them. They hmm. had their opportunity. Uh, nothing's going to change now. And so uh, committed to NDSU. Um, but then, you know, the week before signing day or whatever it was, they hired the new coach. Yes. And so then you have to look at it. It's like, well, this isn't the guy. And he comes in and says all the right things. You know, it's, you know, this guy's, you know, can't believe he missed out on you. In-state prospect seems like a home run. And it's like he said all the right things. But I was like, gosh, I just can't, you know, go back on my word now against NDSU. And Did he come to your house? Uh, I don't remember. Okay. I, don't, I don't think he did. Okay. Um, but... You know, it was, we were on the phone pretty much yeah. every night, and I went down there and had a great meeting with him in person. So, because I can remember talking to the Bison staff at the time when this was, and they were sweating like, okay, this, we want, we have to get this guy. Like, right. we want this guy badly when PJ started talking to you. They, right. Oh, they, my, were, they were sweating <laughs> massively on that yeah, one. Yeah. My buddy Logan McCormick was yeah. on his <laughs> official visit with Coach Hedberg when Hedberg got the call for me, and he's like, Hedberg totally just blew me off to talk to you. He's like, I feel so slighted. <laughs> 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 that's funny well it worked out for both of you there yes, in the long it did. run there sure so, did. um you mentioned you got married uh tell me about that and just the amount your bison brothers that were there for that it had to be quite the quite the shindig yes it was <laughs> up there in uh hat north dakota yeah. where we got married and uh you know last summer was very dry um except for my wedding day <laughs> which was an outdoor wedding it absolutely poured the entire day <laughs> Uh, and it was just a oh, muddy man. mess, but once everyone kind of said like, you know, whatever, and decided to just have fun in the rain, yep. it was an absolute blast. And you know, the number of people that have told us since then, uh, you know, what a memorable wedding yeah, that was. Right. It's like, oh, for right. different reasons, exactly. but it was so much fun. And that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, over a year now into marriage and it's the best. It's fantastic. And uh, a couple of your four, like Cordell Folson got married this mm-hmm. weekend. Cody just got, uh, engaged. Yep. It's the... The intersection of what you know, football life, but you guys all were, especially you were there for six years. So you're right. there for so many different intersections of people that that you got attachments to guys that have been gone for a while and guys that are still currently on the team. Yeah, yep. I mean, you know, they talk about when you get recruited, they're like, you know, these guys will be your best friends yeah. for the rest of your life, and you're like, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Me and my high school friends were pretty close, and <laughs> I still, have, you know, high school friends yeah. I'm very close with, but. These guys, you know, we still to this day are talking pretty much every day, and and we are like best friends, so it's very cool. And then, yeah, like you said, I I still have a lot of connections with guys that are on the team. So, um, I think Sam and Phil were pretty excited about that. Yeah, at practice, they're like, "Oh my gosh, I didn't know you knew all these guys like that." And I was like, <laughs> "I've only been gone for like a year and a half." It's but it's funny, crazy. You say, right? You say that, mm-hmm. but it it's long and it's not. It is. It's, it's, it's weird like that. I had the conversation with Jake Cavo when we were at practice. I was like. You know, you don't really realize, but the train keeps rolling without you. Mm-hmm. Even when I was hurt, it's like, oh, they yep. are just going to carry on without yep. you, whether you're here or not. So it's kind of a weird feeling like that. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's still a lot of good connections. On don't get team. upset with me on this. Like, I remember visiting with you and Hunter Lifke before the championship game against the Jacks mm-hmm. in 20. Like, you and, uh, well, boy, those two guys out there might make this a heck of a lot of a different football game, along right. with a couple other guys that yeah. were hurt. But that was that was indicative of what you was talking about. Like, yeah, the Bison still made it all the way there without, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm looking at all American, all conference, all Americans standing next to me on the sideline, which right. is kind of reflective of, of what you're just talking about. Yeah. I mean, even like when you're hurt um, and you're, you know, having surgery, you're like, they're still out there at yeah. practice. You know, they're going to keep practicing re- regardless of if you're there or not. And um, yeah, I mean that, that season, uh, still making it down to Frisco was pretty cool. Obviously, didn't end the way we wanted it to, but um, yeah, I mean, things are just going to keep rolling like that. Uh, I have a couple minutes left. I'm going to do a couple rapid fire things here because I didn't get a chance to ask you this. Um, 
best road trip that you ever took in uh, in the Missouri Valley was where? Which one did you really like going to? Ooh, that's tough. I would say, I mean, going up to Grand Forks, just taking the bus ride up there. That's <laughs> that that was pretty fun, and that's obviously a unbelievable place to play it gets so loud yep. in that tin shed it's pretty up good there. <laughs> yeah um we always enjoyed uh going out to missouri state um i think you know down in missouri they have pretty good food yep. same with southern illinois okay uh, the food was always great there <laughs> um but yeah i mean yeah i, th- I think i would say okay. southern illinois All right. how about least one what do you dis- like dislike the most of going on the road um man that's tough i would probably say Northern Iowa, mm. um, I mean, it's loud in oh. there, and uh, you know, not the newest dome down there either. So we're packed in just the tiniest <laughs> little room in the back of their dome there. But we played down there during COVID that's when there's right. like a thousand yes. people in the stand, that's... and it's like it's still loud. Yep. Like you just can't hear anything in there. <laughs> Who was the most like I don't know, maybe underrated guy under the radar that maybe overperformed in your time, like? Man, there wasn't a lot of hype around this guy, but boy, he just he, he delivered. What uh, comes to mind when I ask you that? In in the grand scheme of tight end play at NDSU, I only played with this guy for one year, but Jeff Ilias uh, was a phenomenal tight end, yep. and I don't think that gets talked about enough. I mean, just you know, kind of an undersized guy, but blocking on the line, just an absolute technician, as we like to call him. Yep. I mean, just flawless technique. And then obviously a great receiver of the ball. So I think in the grand scheme of <laughs> NDSU football, he kind of gets you know, swept That's under the good, rug man. a little bit. I forget how old so you talented. are because that was 2017. That's a long time ago. This, this last yeah. year. <laughs> yeah. No, but he, yeah. I've, I've okay. played with a lot That's of good. really good tight ends, yes. but, you know, Jeff was definitely up there. How about on the current group, the guys that you still know, is there one that we haven't heard of yet that it may have a chance to, to break through this um, upcoming year? I mean, that tight end group right now is so deep. And, you know, being out at practice, it's like, you know, some of these guys probably feel a little bit slighted. Yeah. Um, but the, the group is just so deep. It's like... But the, at the same time, these guys are too good to keep off the field. So you got to figure out a way to try and, you know, let everybody get on the field a little bit. But, um, you know, Finn Diggins, uh, Caden Zenzen, um, Carson, Carson Williams. Williams. Yep. I mean, like, it's young guys that have a ton of talent. And, I mean, that room's going to be set for a long time to come. So. You had the, the the prototype, though. The, your frame, that's mm-hmm. just you, – you, you could play defensive end. You could play – you know, that was when – was tight end always going to be the spot when you were recruited? Um, it was kind of up in the air. Um, but just, you know, I played quarterback in high school. So <laughs> having the offensive side of things, I think, kind of swayed me a little bit more to tight end. I mean, I couldn't throw the ball at all. Quarterback <laughs> was off the table. But uh, I think, uh, yeah, just having that offensive side of things kind of made me play tight end. So well, I'm trying to think now. You caught passes from in Eastland Pract- East Stick, mm-hmm. uh, Trey Lance, Zeb Noland, Cam Miller, Quincy, Quincy Patterson, Patterson Cole and Cole. Is that everybody? Cole Davis. How did you get Cole Davis, Davis. <laughs> too? Yeah. That's wild. That's yeah. pretty good. Yep. That's that that talk about the lineage there. That's right. impressive, man. Yeah. Uh yeah. I want to get you in trouble here before I let you go, because I've heard from a couple former players. Mm-hmm. Do the do the former players upset if they're not on my countdown, the Twitter countdown? Have you heard some blowback um, on that? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think I've already had two players mess with me. Hey, what? Why am I not yeah. out of here? Well, especially like I think some guys will get it one year, and then <laughs> if on the next year they're not on it, they're just like, "What the heck, man?" We got to have a screening process here to get it on. I didn't yeah. know. So there yeah, it is. Yeah, put in a request. You got to fill out a form to get on there or something like There's that. There's got to be minimum requirements on there. That's yep. good stuff. I yep. appreciate it. It's going to be great to see you back uh, with Bison football. I think a ton of people will be uh, great to to hear your voice on there. Um, and uh, you can keep Phil Hansen in line, which is always a, a tough thing to do. Yeah, I, I mean, that's a that, strong so. personality. So, <laughs> Thanks for I'll coming by. Yeah, Congratulations, thanks, and uh, can't wait to see you next week out in Colorado, yep. all right? Yep. Noah Gindorf joining us, newest member of the Bison Radio team. You'll be hearing him with Sam Niederman and Phil Hansen as part of the Bison Radio broadcast this fall. We'll take our final break. We come back. We'll wrap things up. Bison Media Zone coming up in just a few minutes. Back after this.